Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Eve Guru. Thank you so much for watching. Today we are going to be digging into the speeds and feeds for the One Infinity when you are doing V carving. So I recently completed a project that required some V carving, which I did in Fusion 360, and I got kind of okay results. I wasn't terribly thrilled with the outcome. I wasn't sure if it was because I was not cutting fast enough, I was cutting too fast, or maybe that my uh, RPM, my spindle speed was not set properly. So after I finished the project, I decided to dig into this a little bit. And so I have a mocked up a good test in Fusion 360 to kind of replicate the results that I was getting. And then I ran a whole bunch of tests on some scrap wood over on the Onefinity behind me. And I found some interesting results that I was not quite expecting. So what I plan to do here is walk you through the tests that I did in Fusion 360, walk you through the various tests that I did actually on the machine, show you the results, and then make some recommendations based on what I found through my experimentation. Okay, so let's go ahead and quickly cut over the Fusion 360. I will show you the um, design that I mocked up to help test this and then we will switch over to some pictures of the various tests that I ran on the Onefinity and show you the results and then talk about what I think is going on. All right, let's go ahead and cut over to Fusion 360. Here we are in Fusion 360. This is the design that I have come up with. As you can see, it is just a series of spirals. I chose the spiral pattern here because I was seeing different results based off the grain direction of the wood. So I was just curious to know exactly where I was having issues. So doing a spiral pattern there uh, allowed me to exercise the settings at all different grain patterns because we're just going around in a circle. So what I have done here is I have actually created uh, two separate setups, one that has a uh, V groove or a V carving operation at 20 inches per minute, 40 inches per minute, 80 inches per minute, and then I did the same exact operation here at 100, 150, and 200. Now I only used one row of these spirals here. I did not use both because the material I had was not quite tall enough or big enough. Otherwise I would have ran all of this test at once. But nevertheless, so what I ended up doing is running this uh, 20, 40, 80 three times, uh, the spindle setting at one on the Makita, which is right around 12,000 RPMs, the spindle setting at two and a half, which is somewhere around 16,000 RPMs or so on the Makita, and then at four, which is somewhere around 20 to 22,000 RPMs. Uh, there is no direct RPM uh, equivalent on that dial. There's just some folks that have measured it, and those are the kind of generalities for the Makita. If you have a VFD, a variable frequency drive, then you can dial that, uh, that RPM rating in specifically and very accurately, but I do not. So we ran the test with what I had at my disposal. All right, so like I said, I ran all of these tests three times at the different uh, RPM ratings, and then I ran them again at the different uh, speed ratings. So what I ended up with is uh, three sets times two, or six total outputs of the test here. And so I'm gonna go ahead and cut over to the screen, show you some pictures of the outcome, and explain exactly what's going on with each cut that I did and the different speeds and feeds. So the first picture here is showing the three cuts that I made at 20, 40, and 80 inches per minute with the spindle speed set to one, which again is roughly 12,000 RPMs. And what you can see here is when the bit was cutting with the grain, it is leaving little fuzzies there on the different places of the spiral cut. When it was cutting against the grain, it actually produced a fairly clean cut. I was surprised by this. I thought that I was getting a uh, tear out on the cross grain, uh, not an incomplete cut with the, uh, with the grain direction. So that actually surprised me a lot. What surprised me even more, however, is the 20, 40, and 80 speeds really did not change the outcome at all not even a little bit. You can see here and here and here where there is an equal amount of flaking. Um, it's not tear out, it's where it's an incomplete cut of the groove. And you can see the same at the top where it went with the grain as well, here, here, 
and here. So let's go ahead and quickly fast forward to the uh, next cut, which was done at the spindle speed of 2.5, which is again roughly around uh, 16,000 RPM on the Makita. And what you can see is very little change in the outcome at the different speeds. Now you can see at the bottom here, unfortunately, the uh, 80 inches per minute uh, got cut off because the again the piece of scrap wood I was using wasn't quite big enough uh, but you can see for the 20 and the 40 the little flaking here is happening uh, at the same locations but there's a little bit more actually uh, you're getting a little bit more flaking or curling at the top uh, uh, typically a down cut bit would be used to avoid this but with a V cutter you do not have that option so uh, got a little bit more random results with the spindle speed set at 2.5 so let's go ahead and jump to the next picture and you can see this is the spindle speed set at four which is roughly around 18,000 maybe 20,000 rpms on the Makita and it looks amazing there is no tear out there is no uh, half cuts or at least not a lot you can see a little bit if you zoom in on the picture here on in all the same location regardless of the speed of cut and I thought that was really interesting now you can see when we got up to 80 here there's a little bit more fraying here on the top than there is on the 20 which again I thought that was a little interesting so at this moment, I stopped and I said, okay, well, if the spindle speed is turned up to four, then can we turn the spindle speed down and increase the feed rate and get the same outcome? And so I ran some more tests. So let's flip over here to the first test I did at 100, 150, and 200 inches per minute. Now, I did not quite have my depths set properly, but what you can see here very clearly is at the spindle speed of one, we're still getting this incomplete cut on the tops and the bottoms of all of the cuts, no matter what the feed rate is. And in fact, if I scroll forward here and show you the 2.5 on the dial, you can see there is still some incomplete cuts happening on all of the cuts. And then jumping into the Four on the dial, you can see here, the cut quality is not as awesome as I would want, but there is less flaking. Uh, there's more curling on the top here. So what is the takeaway from all of this experimentation and this data? Well, my gut reaction is here that uh, the feed rate does not really determine how well or what the quality of the cut is. It is the spindle speed. And in fact, cutting very fast with a fast spindle speed does not even guarantee you results. Cutting relatively slowly at a high spindle speed for this particular bit, which is a 90 degree V cutter that is 11 and 16 inches wide, um, is the optimal cut set of parameters for this particular bit. Now, I think that's probably a linear translation into other bits as well. Now, the exact dial setting and the exact speeds might change a little bit, but what I'm thinking is a higher RPM and a moderate cut speed for the V cutter is the way to go kind of sort of across the board. Now I will caveat this and say the particular V cutter that I have is an Amana and I will post a link down below for the specific one that I used in this test. Um, it is only one flute. And so I don't know, I suspect that a two flute or a three flute V cutter would have different results. I am hoping that a two flute cutter would allow me to use a slightly slower spindle speed and still get the good results that I got with the previous picture. So uh, it's hard to tell. I will continue to do some testing, but I wanted to post this video and get this out here and show the initial results I had. I have seen a lot of questions on the Onefinity forums as well as in various locations as well on what the optimal uh, feeds and speeds are for these type of cutters. And so through this experimentation, I think we've come up with some pretty good results where, uh, you know, an, a finishing speed of around 40 or, or 60 or 80 inches per minute with the spindle set at four, uh, which is kind of high for the Onefinity and for the Makita, but setting the spindle speed at four produced really, really great results. I am going to, again, do more testing with a higher spindle speed, jacking it up to five and six, and just see if 
uh, that has any better effect if I get better results or maybe worse results. And then playing around with some of the flute sizes, the number of flutes on the V cutters as well to see if I add a two flute cutter if I get different results than I did with the one flute. I do not believe that the angle of the V cutter is really going to change the results very much, but I will play around with that as well. And hopefully if there's interest, leave your comments down below. I will post a follow up to this video with additional results with different V cutters and V carvers and different feeds and speeds and whatnot to dial in exactly the feeds and speeds for the folks that are doing a lot of V carving. Well, that was a video. I hope you enjoyed it. I think the results were fairly compelling and very straightforward. I was actually a little surprised by that and I was a little surprised by the results. But nevertheless, it worked out in the end and I think I have some pretty good um, answers to my questions for future operations. All right, if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing, ringing that bell, very important these days. If you like the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up anyway but leave your comments down below so we can make future videos better. If you're not already following me on Instagram, please consider doing so. That's where I post pictures of projects like this that become future videos. All right, thank you so much for getting this far and thank you for watching the video and don't forget to be inspired. And then summarize it all with some recommendations on base what I found. All right. So if you like this type of content, we do it all the time here on the channel. So <clears throat> in the end, it all worked out. So if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing, ringing that bell. Very important these days. No. <laughs>